All right, now let's go and talk about um, radicals. So again, radicals is pretty important in pre-calculus. They do show up a, you know, quite a bit. Um, so it's really important to make sure we know how to simplify them and kind of apply some operations with them. So first of all, let's just kind of practice on simplifying the expression. Um, there's many, many different ways we can simplify an expression uh, or a radical expression. I think the most important thing is to recognize, like, rather than using prime factorization or some of the stuff we do in algebra two, is really to kind of rewrite this. And, you know, we're looking for what number multiplied by itself is going to, you know, divide, evenly divide into 32. Basically, what we want to do is take 32 and divide it into square numbers. So what I recognize here is I can rewrite this as a 16 times 2. Right, so you want to find square numbers that evenly divide into your what we call our radicand. The reason why that's important is because again, we can break this up into a square root of 16 times a square root of two. Right, that was the rules of logarithm or rules of radicals allow us to break up our radicand like that. So now I can take the square root of 16. Right, the square root of 16 is just going to be a four. I can't take the square root of two, so I'll just leave that as a four times the square root of two. Um, now in this case. A couple different ways we can also do that. Remember, we can always rewrite radicals as rational powers. So in this case, what I would simply do is I would go ahead and rewrite a square root as raised to the one half power. So therefore, I can rewrite this as a 2x raised to the eight power. And then then I can rewrite, rewrite that as raised to the one half power. Now, what my rules of radicals or rules of rational powers or powers just tell me to do is whenever I have an exponent raised to another power, I can just multiply those powers. So therefore, this is the same thing as a 2x, 8 times 1 half is going to be to the fourth power. Now, it's really important though, when you can't distribute like your power across addition. If you remember that polynomial, remember we had the 2x minus 1, I believe, squared. Like you can't distribute that power across addition or subtraction, but you can go ahead and distribute a power across multiplication because basically the way that this reads is a 2x times a 2x times a 2x times a 2x, okay? So when I take two, you know, what is two times two times two times two? Well, that's gonna equal a 16 X to the fourth power. Um, the next thing is like, what about when you multiply binomials? And remember multiply binomials, you could use like the FOIL acronym or you can just apply distributive property. Like everything needs to be multiplied by everything. And again, when you're multiplying radicals, as long as they have the same index, like square root or cube root or fourth root, you can go ahead and multiply the radicands, which is the numbers or the expressions under the radicals. So let's just go and work through this step by step here. So square root of five times square root of five is going to be the square root of 25. Um, square root of five times the square root of two is going to be a square root of 10. Okay, we have the negative square root of six times a square root of five. So that's gonna be a negative square root of 30. And a negative square root of six times a square root of two, that's going to be a negative square root of 12. Now, obviously you could simplify square root of 25 like from the onset, but now let's just kind of work left or right. And again, from that original problem, I want to look for square numbers that evenly divide into our radicands. So I don't need to do that. 25 is already a square number, right? So that's just equal to 5 um, plus the square root of 10. I can't do anything with that. So I'll just leave that there. Now, the square root of 30, like what square numbers would possibly divide into 30? Well, I have 4, which doesn't go into there. Um, 9, nope. 16, nope. So there's really nothing I can do to simplify this. So I'm just going to leave that as a negative square root of 30. However, when you look at the square root of 12, you can say that four does evenly divide into that, right? So I can rewrite that as a square root of four times a three. And then the square root of four here is going to be a two. So I can finally write this out as a five plus a square root of 10 minus a square root of 30 minus a two square root of three. And again, I cannot combine them. Like when you're multiplying radicals, when the index is the same, you can multiply your radicands. It's okay if they're not exactly the same. But when you're adding or subtracting, they have to have the exact same index as well as the exact same radicand for you to be able to combine them. So in this case, we have subtraction, right? You see that, hey, you can't subtract these, right? They both are square roots, that's good, but they have different radicands. So we're not gonna be able to subtract them. However, one thing we can do is simplify them. And again, we wanna look for what square numbers evenly divide into, on, into these radicals, radicands. And when I do that here, what I have is a 25 times two, okay? And that's gonna be minus a nine times two. Well, what's cool here? I can take the square root, like I can break this up, right? That's a 25 times the square root of two, right? Just remember those rules of radicals. That's gonna be a square root of nine times a square root of two. Okay, so the square root of five is going to be a five square root of two, and the square root of nine is going to be a three square root of two. 
Okay, so now on to the next one, we have one divided by square root of two. So a lot of times in expression and precalc, because we're gonna um, wanna simplify this, so we're not gonna have a radical in the denominator. So to do that, what we're gonna do is rationalize the denominator, because the reason why that's gonna happen is square root of two times square root of two is square root of four, which is going to be two. So therefore we're not dividing by a rational number. Um, it's really important though, whenever you're rationalizing the denominator, make sure that you multiply by the square root of two in the numerator as well as in the denominator, because that's gonna produce what we call an equivalent fraction. So therefore this is gonna give us the square root of two over, um, um, again, two. So just make sure that um, we can go ahead and simplify. Just make sure you multiply that square root of two in the top and the bottom. Now, one of the key mistakes that students will do is they see a problem like this and say, oh, we just do the same thing again. Well, no, because again, by distributive property, you have to multiply the square root of two into the three and the negative um, square and the negative square root of two. So even though you get rid of the radical here, you're not going to get rid of it when you're multiplying it by three. So what we need to do in this case is actually multiply by the conjugate. So three minus the square root of two has a conjugate of three plus the square root of two. And what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna multiply that on the top as well as on the bottom. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and apply distributive property. And then here, you're gonna go ahead and apply FOIL, right? So we're gonna multiply everything times everything. So let's go ahead and then like expand this out and see what it's gonna be. So two times three is going to be six. Two times a square root of two is going to be a positive two, square root of two. And that's gonna be all over here. Now here, I'm gonna have a three times three, which is going to be a nine. Now it's really important to watch out. Notice my inner and my outer terms. Three times a negative square root of two is a three negative square root of two. And then three times a positive square root of two is gonna be a positive three square root of two. So basically what I have is a negative three square root of two plus a positive three square root of two. Well, what's gonna to happen to those? That's just gonna to go to zero, right? So I'm not even gonna waste my time spending that in there. What I will multiply though is a negative square root of two times a positive square root of two, which is going to be a negative square root of four, which is now going to be a negative two. So that is something I can definitely go ahead and um, simplify or simplify in that case. And then I can't really do anything with the six plus the two square root of two, but um, so I can say six plus two square root of two, and then nine minus two is going to be a seven. So I could leave it like that, or you could definitely distribute the seven into both of those. So you could say that's a six sevenths plus a two square root of two sevenths. And there you go. That could be like a simplified answer for you on that one. All right, in this next example, you can see we basically have kind of the exact same thing going on. Um, we just have, we just need to multiply by our conjugate. Now, the one difference here I would make is I'm going to put parentheses um, around this um, in the numerator as well as in the, den I'm sorry, denominator as well as in the numerator. And um, just because you can see, it's just like kind of good practice here of multiplying or applying our distributive property here. Now, again, this is going to give us a difference of two squares. So hopefully we can kind of do this um, rather quickly. We basically just need to multiply the first two terms and the last two terms. Because again, the middle terms are going to add to zero, right? Whenever you have the same expression, but one explain expression with the same terms, but one's positive and one's negative, then you're going to have that difference of squares relationship. Up top here, I'm just going to have to multiply everything by everything. So four times two is going to be an eight. Four times square root of three is going to be a four square root of three. Two times square root of three is going to be a two square root of three. And square root of three times square root of three is a square root of nine, which is going to be a three. In the denominator here, I'm going to have two times two, which is a four. And a negative square root of three times a positive square root of three is going to be a negative three. All right, um, so now I can combine my like terms. Whenever you're adding radicals, right, we're going to keep the radical, but we're going to add the coefficients. So therefore, that's going to be a 6 radical 3, and 8 plus 3 is going to be 11. So it's 11 plus a 6 square root of 3 and all over 1. So therefore, I don't really need to write it all over 1. You can simply just rewrite this as 11 plus a 6 square root of 3. Our next example we have, we're going to be solving some equations. So we have 2 radical um, square root of x minus 3 equals 7. So the main thing here we want to make sure we understand is the inverse operations, right? And if I said like x plus 2 is equal to 5, right, we need to apply the inverse operation here of what's happening to x, right? So x is being added by 2. So the inverse operation of adding 2 is going to be subtracting 2, right? So the inverse operation of a square root of x is going to be squaring the x. Um, but before we go and apply our inverse operations here, what we need to make sure we do before we square both sides, we need to make sure we can isolate um, this x here. So what I'm going to do here, and then also we want to make sure we check our answer because um, the square root function, if you remember what that graph looks like, that doesn't always, that isn't always going to be checking our, um, our crossing, right? You could have a graph like this that's actually not going to have a x intercept or any solution. So let's go ahead and um, go ahead and apply our inverse operation. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add a three on both sides. So I have a two square root of x equals a negative four. And then I will divide by two, right? And now we have something that's kind of interesting. The square root of x equals a negative two. Well, what can you imagine, like what numbers can you think about the real number system that you can take the square root of something and it's gonna be a negative, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? Especially the even root. You can't take the even root of something and it's gonna be a negative. 
So therefore, from this case, we could say it's going to be no solution. Now, again, you could also check this by saying, oh, I'm not sure if that is exactly the case. So let's just say, if, you know, let's just go ahead and check it out. What do you say? Well, what could I do? What if you squared both sides? Okay, then you'd have a X is going to equal a positive four. Well, go and take your answer and plug it back into the equation, right? So that's something we learned, remember, like in algebra one, you should always make sure you go back and check your answer to make sure you don't have any like extraneous or no solutions. So when I do that, I get a two square root of four minus three equals a negative seven. And again, when you calculate this, square root of four is two, two times two is four, four minus three is one. Well, one does not equal a negative seven. So make sure when you are applying your operations um, or you're simplifying that um, you're also go ahead and, and checking your work. Okay, um, in this example here, the first thing I'm gonna do is again, you can see my radical has already been isolated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and square both sides here. So I have a two X plus three is equal to a 225. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract a three on both sides. So I have a two X is equal to a 222. Now I can go ahead and divide by two and I get X is equal to 111. And again, we can just go ahead and check our answer here. But again, this one kind of makes sense. Like when you plug in 111 multiply by two, that's 222 plus three is 225. The square root of 225 is going to be a you know positive 15. So this one is gonna go ahead and check out. Okay, in this example, what we have is the square root on both sides. So what we need to do is obviously get rid of the square root. So to do that, what we're simply gonna do is just square both sides. Now remember, these are binomial squared, right? So therefore, it's basically this binomial being multiplied by itself. So the main thing we're going to want to do um, in this case is, you know, multiply like square square root of x plus two times square root of x plus two is just going to give us a x plus a two, and one plus square root of x times a one plus square root of x that's going to give us a one plus a two square root of x plus x, right? Because basically that is a perfect square trinomial, um, and you could definitely go ahead and expand it on the right hand side. Now what I'm gonna do is just kind of get my X's here um, to the same side. So if I'm gonna subtract an X on both sides here, and therefore I get a two equals a one plus a two square root of X. Um, I can subtract a one, so I get a one equals a two square root of X, um, divide by two, divide by two, and I get a one half is equal to the square root of X. And again, can you take the square root of what number is going to equal a one half? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. So I'll go ahead and square it on both sides, and I get X is going to equal a one fourth. And therefore then what we can do is just go ahead and plug a one fourth into this equation to make, to go ahead and make sure to see if that would um, indeed go ahead and work. Um, and again, you know, if you want to go ahead and um, check it out, let's just go ahead and check our work here. So I have a one fourth plus two is equal to a one plus the square root of a one fourth. Okay. So in this case, a one fourth plus two, I can basically rewrite that to an eight, right? An eight over four. So therefore this is going to give me a nine over four. Um, and then this is going to be the square root of one fourth is basically one half, right? So that's going to be one plus a one half. Now, again, technically you could write this as a two over two. So nine fourths is a three halves. And then if you did read this, uh, if you rewrote this as a two over two, then this would be equal to a three halves. So you can see how that kind of works. Um, this, is, this is again, another example. You're going to do the exact same thing here. So we're going to quantity square on um, both sides. And we do that, I get a much easier equation to work with. A 2x minus 3 is equal to a 4x minus 7. Now it's just basically solving my equation, get my variables to the same side. I'll add a 7 to both sides. And in this case, I'm going to get a 4 equals a 2x. And then I can go ahead and divide by 2. And therefore, x equals 2. And again, now and this one's a little bit easier to like mentally check. Let's just plug it in. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3 is 1. So square root of 1 is 1. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 7 is 1, square root of 1 is obviously 1, so therefore this answer checks out just like that answer did.